Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work, and this is the review on the Tucson TS-204 Bronc. So, this knife was sent to me by Seems Logical. Thank you, Seems Logical, for letting me check this knife out. Thank you for the support. I love you, brother. I really appreciate it. Let's get into this knife really quickly. This is S90V, carbon fiber, white G10, G10 O-ring, titanium liners with a lock bar insert and then you know the material acts as an over travel stop titanium milled clip with a titanium backspacer all the bells and whistles on this guy which we'll get into as we go along now this is a tepe and matt Semensky design this is a little bit of a unique, a little bit different um, design coming from Tucson. Now, I love Tepe's designs. Uh, I've had a few of them, so I, I've been a huge fan of Tepe's designs. So this was one I definitely wanted to check out. Now, I did sharpen it. We did use it, and we'll get into that in just a second. So this knife is a little chunky, right? It, it is a, a thick boy, so to say, but it makes sense and i'm going to explain that as we move along but first off the blade is three inches i see it on some sites it was saying it was like 2.7 it is absolutely not it's about three and a sixteenth it's basically just a three inch blade seven and a quarter overall here it is next to the civivi elementum we'll just do a couple very quick size comparisons and you can see it's not much longer than the elementum it is a bit beefier and it feels like a lot bigger knife, but it's not much longer. And then two more. Here's the Para 3, the Spyderco Para 3, which is basically, they're basically the exact same length. And then here is the Manix, the Spyderco Manix 2, which you can see is a bit bigger. Now, the size is a great EDC size, and even though it is pretty compact, I guess you could say, meaning in size and length, you still get a full, full grip, a full comfortable grip on this knife. You know, when you get a handle that's thick like this, it's going to be a little er more ergonomic, especially with hard pressure. When, you know, instead of something being very thin and skinny in the hand, this is more palm filling. So the blade, 140 thousandths thick blade stock not a thin blade stock it gets down to about 18 thousandths behind the edge so the taper from here to here i wouldn't say is amazing geometry and usually we've been seeing some amazing geometry from tucson tucson does amazing flat grind some of the best in the business but this one is a little different, and but it does make sense, and I'll make it make more sense as we go along. But the blade, utility cuts, man, this thing is a champ. One, it has a nice, strong, yet uh, precision tip, and with the, the handle, the way it is, the relationship between your hand, the handle, and the tip is just amazing. This thing is an absolute precision cutting beast. It does it very, very well. Now, you can use your finger when doing the utility cuts, or you can kind of just use the thickness of the handle to push up into your palm as you strike across, you know, whatever your preference is, it works really good, even on the thumb going across. So we'll show some utility cuts and, you know, it just, it cuts really good. I mean, you get so much leverage into that tip and it's still a strong enough tip to where you can, you can rely on it over and over and over and over. Now, slicing with it, it, you know, it's still a great slicer, but it's not, yeah, I wouldn't say, that. okay, so it's not going to be a great slicer compared to a knife that slices great, but it cuts pretty good considering. So it's going to be mainly a utility user, yet you can get by with slicing, cutting, popping straps, you know, especially with the ergos and the leverage you get behind the handle. The leverage and the ergos that you get behind the handle just makes the cuts that much more comfortable. And when you're comfortable when cutting and you can deliver a lot of pressure into your cuts, it's just gonna cut better. 
Now, going back to the blade, it has a beautiful sharpening choil. Love to see that sharpening choil, which also seconds as a finger choil, and it kind of leans, so you actually have quite a bit of room. Blade stock is nice and thick for, you know, for you to get a good uh, purchase on the back. There's no jimping back here or anything. Now, this is not fully flat. And what I'm talking about is it's not a straight edge. That's what I should have said. So if you look at it here, this is a flat surface. You can see there it has a little bit raised up. So it's flat here, and then it goes up right there. Now, to sharpen something like that, you don't want to go straight across your stone. You want to come across your stone and pull off of it. So you want to go across your stone and pull off to get that tip. And I'm going to show that right now. So, and then we'll talk about sharpening S90V as we go along. So I, I wanted to make sure that I um, kind of tested the steel a little bit on the stone because that kind of tells me, you know, at least a little bit of an idea of how the steel is doing. And this is S90V. And Tucson doesn't have the best reputation with S90V or M390. So I wanted to see how good it would take a polish. So as I was sharpening it, you know, and like I was saying before about how you got to sharpen a blade um, like this, as you're coming across the stone, you got to make sure that you get to that, that, uh, the tip. So you want to make sure you come off of, when you get to about the middle of the blade, you start coming off of the stone to make sure you get the tip and you just basically just rinse and repeat go back and forth back and forth making sure that when you get to the belly or i guess it's, it's not really a belly but when you get halfway up the blade you want to start coming off of the stone to make sure you get that tip because like i said it's not a perfectly straight flat edge it does have a slight it this is a very very slight bit of belly but just enough where you have to sharpen it you know, off of the stone just a little bit. But it's very, very, very easy. It's kind of like the same way you'd, you'd sharpen a drop point or a sheep's foot. There you go. Same way you'd sharpen a sheep's foot. So it works really good. The, the only difference is like with a sheep's foot and with a drop point, you might just want to raise your elbow. With this, it's not that much. So you kind of have to just come off of the stone. But as I go, went through the stones and I got to the last stone that I wanted to put on it, it did keep a significant amount of bite. And we will talk a little bit more about the S90V here in a bit. Let's get to the action really quick because I got to get to the rest of the good and bad. So the action, amazing, amazing action. Um, it's more of a light switch. Because, well, one, the jimping is pretty aggressive. Uh, it, uh, it bites you really good in a good way. And it's rounded down here by the handle. So that sits nice and firm in your palm. Like I can palm it like this really good. So the jimping, you want to let it bite your finger and then just continue to pull down and it flies out. Now, you can absolutely push button it. But in my opinion, it likes to be light switched. And because of the way the grip is... You, this actually is pretty comfortable doing a thumb flick. Um, a lot, you know, most knives you can thumb flick, but because of the thickness and the depth, you kind of, you know, you have a good grip on your knife and it just is pretty satisfying to thumb flick. So the detent is uh, relatively strong in a good way though, but it's not really because I can honestly reverse flick it if I really want to. So it's not so strong, but you can feel it's, it's a good detent, well tuned. Now, the, the lock bar, it's not the easiest to get to, but it's pretty easy to get to. You can definitely get to it from the side. So, you know, in my book, that's pretty easy to get to if you can get to it from the side. So you can get to it from the side. And then when you unlock it, the detent ball is right there. Now, most two sons have a detent ramp, which this one does too. Now, when you unlock it, you can let it hit your finger as long as you hold a little bit low on the lock bar not crazy low but a little low and it's not crazy drop shutty or anything but you can easily slap shut slap it shut so it's actually relatively easy to drop shut it's pretty drop shutty actually um especially after oiling it i mean i can easily just one slap 
which is very easy to do. I just kind of flick of the wrist. But without doing that and just giving it a couple shakes, it just goes right down and it's perfectly centered. Now, the action comes from, it has ceramic bearings that are on a racetrack. I've showed this many times in most of my Tucson videos. I'm not going to take it apart and show all that. So you can watch a lot of my Tucson videos. I usually show the washer or the, the washer that they have that separates the titanium from the washer um, and the ceramic bearings, how they run on a racetrack. And then it's got a pretty big ceramic detent ball as well. These liners are titanium and they are milled out, but they are very, very thick. Let's see if we can get, you can see the milling a little bit in there. It is heavily milled, but the liners, <clears throat> you can see the lock bar insert in there. The steel lock bar insert right here. The detent ball up, it's right up on top, but you can see the screw holding the steel lock bar insert. Very thick titanium liners. I love to see that. It's almost like a frame lock. Look at the titanium backspacer. Love the stone wash titanium. Love seeing that. It looks beautiful. All T8s around the board, like Tucson usually does or almost always does. I love, love, love to see that. Great hardware too. Tucson does use steel hardware, but it's really good quality steel hardware. The white G10 is beautifully done. I mean, it's just, it almost looks like a white micarta. Very smooth. The line right here, you can barely, you actually you can't even feel it. Carbon fiber is always well done. For the most part, we're going to go into some bad here in a second, but love their carbon fiber. Their carbon fiber is always good quality carbon fiber. They do a good job with it. The G10 is really good quality. They do a good job with it. Uh, very smooth all the way around, nice and contoured. It's very contoured in the hand. It feels so good in the hand. And right after we get to some bad, we'll, we're going to go back into my conclusion, which I think you should listen to because it really brings this all together and what I really think about the knife. Now, it does have internal stop pins. That's another thing. So it has a track right here on the titanium liners where if you see a groove in there and you can see the stop pin right there coming around and they lock up and then the lock bar locks in and it has the stop pin right there. So internal stop pins, love to see that. It just adds to the strength, especially for side to side play. And just, you know, it just adds to really to build strength and build quality. Also, one more really cool thing about this knife is it sounds. It has a very, very cool sound. The clip, the clip works good in and out of the pocket. No complaints, really. Um, it's, uh, it is a titanium milled clip, but it does work pretty good. Um, not bad. It is inset in the, the G10, and then it has one screw. So normally I would complain about the one screw, but no complaints because they inset it into the G10, which stops it from getting the side to side play. So I'm happy with that. It sits relatively deep in the pocket. We'll show some in and out of the pocket and it works pretty good. I mean, I, you know, it's not bad. It's not the best clip, but it's also not a bad clip. So it works pretty good. It could be a little smoother under this uh, little point where you see it hitting the G10 right there. It could be a little thicker right there, but it, it's fine. Now, let's get to some bad things really quick. Even though most of it is done very, very well, the fit and finish is a little wonky in some areas. So we have back here, if you look at the G10, where it lines up from one side to the other, you can see this side is higher than this side. Not that big of a deal, but it is a thing. Then when you look inside the seam here, I can actually see some of the glue or something in some areas in between the two. 
you see the little how it's like separated right there right there you see a little glue um and then also if you look at the lines right here where they meet up they're a little off which you would make sense because they're off back here um this side is actually tightly fit pretty good but this side the show side it, you know it has a couple tiny tiny gaps not that big of a deal you know but it is still a thing um the the detent when you unlock it if you hold it up high you will get some of that detent lash so you will hit the detent ball now that really doesn't matter that much because they put the detent ramp in which means they put a little ramp so that you don't get held up right there and then you you push it and it goes bang you know like here let me show you another knife that does do that so you can see what i'm talking about when you unlock this wee vapor it hits the detent ball right there now it doesn't have a detent ramp so it's slammed shut you know if i go up high yeah i can push past it but de rever reverse detent ramps really help you for where you can just like swing it shut even if it does hit the detent ball but you can easily get past it just by going down a little bit i didn't even have to go down that far down a little bit and making sure it's past the detent ball but if you hold up a little bit you see it's hitting the detent ball so you just want to hold down just a little bit um next thing the blade finish on this s90v is a satin finish usually on the s90v they do a stone washed finish um I, I was a little surprised with that and the satin finish does get pretty scratched up pretty easily as you can see um and it takes fingerprints a lot lots and lots of fingerprints that's my you know it's weird. Some of their satin finish, I guess it just depends on the steels. Like their, their uh, Sandvik steels really take fingerprints pretty bad. And then some of their steels don't. But I really like their stone wash. I love their satin too. Don't, don't get me wrong. I love their satin finish. It looks really mean and looks really good, but it scratches pretty easily. Um, So it does feel a little thick right and i'm gonna make it make sense here in a second but for a lot of people this might be a, a thick knife for them now for me i like it because i like having a good grip on my knife i feel that it's very secure i don't always want a really thick handle but at times i do especially on a work knife especially one that i'm doing lots of utility cuts with so it makes sense and we'll get into more of that in a second but it does feel a little thick because it is. I mean, here, look at it next to the pair of three, and you can see how much thicker it is. The pair of three is, yeah, you can see how much thicker it is. This is very thick. But like I said, I, you know, when you're doing massive amounts of utility cuts, you want a comfortable handle. So I understand why they did that. Now the S90V, let's go back into that really quick because Tucson doesn't have the best reputation for their S90V. Now I, in my opinion, I think they're doing better. Not great, but better than they were in the past. Now before in the past, when I sharpened their S90V M M390, I couldn't really put a mirror polish on it because if I brought it up to a mirror polish, it would lose all its bite. You know, and usually that means that it's up, uh, um, it's not done right, it's not heat treated right, it's possibly a little soft. But with this one, I had no issues getting it up to a mirror polish and it actually kept a significant amount of bite. Now, how long will it keep that bite? I don't know. Like, you know, I, I'm not doing cut tests, like say Outpost 76 or anything like that. I just basically use it like an EDC knife and that's how I do my reviews. And I cannot get this thing to come up on the camera. I'll just have to insert some, some films. So it, um, but the the mirror came up really good it kept a significant amount of bite it's very very sharp still has a lot of bite to it and it felt good on the stone now what's it going to do in the cut tests i can't say 
Okay, I can't say with a uh, cut touch cutting the exact same cardboard over and over and over. My cuts, they have tapes in the way. It's different kinds of cardboard. You know, I cut straps and just different stuff. I don't cut the exact same stuff over and over and over and over and over and over. So I can't say for sure how good its S9AV will cut in a cut test. I can say it sharpened up really good. It deburred really good. I sharpened it on, on my Benid stones and it took a polish really good. And and it kept a lot of bite so and i i didn't have a problem with its edge retention i did it's not like i made some cuts and then noticed i was getting lots of damage or anything so i you know but does that mean it's just done out of this world and it's so good no i you know it's hard for me to say but i do think that they are doing better than they were in the past in the past i think they were having some issues but i think like most companies that start doing m390 and s90v and some of the super steels they do run into issues off the bat you know i don't know if they're learning the recipe or learning the heat treat uh, protocols i'm not sure but you know, after a while, you keep doing the same steel, you start hearing from the community and start noticing that they're having issues, then you start making changes and improvements. And I do think Tucson is usually paying attention and usually does try to do their best with that. Um, now, the next thing, buying from Tucson. Tucson isn't the easiest to buy. So they are easy to buy. You just got to know how to buy them, right? So this knife right here is going for like a hundred and... $80 or something or 160 I don't know, something like that on AliExpress and a few other places, which makes sense. It's S90V, titanium, carbon fiber, and G10, you know, done very, very well. Uh, two different designers. Um, so it makes sense, but you can get it a lot cheaper if you go through eBay. If you go through eBay and you bid on them, you can get them a lot cheaper. So but then you have to deal with uh, it taking a month to get to your house, possibly. Um, and then depending on the Chinese holiday that's around January, you might wait a little longer. Now, normally I wait between one and four weeks for my two sons from eBay. But sometimes White Mountain Knives carries uh, two sons. And then, like I said, there's a few other places. But they're not in all the knife shops around the world. They're not at Blade HQ. They're not at... Uh, knife center they're they're not at gp knives they're not at a lot of the knife center knife places and i wish they were but i wouldn't buy them from those areas unless if it was a tucson that i see that has been out for a while and usually the price is a little bit cheaper on because i go through ebay i don't mind waiting a couple weeks and saving 40 50 60 80 bucks because this knife i, I bet on ebay i bet i could get it for about 120 dollars you know, so it just depends on the knife. You know, there's knives that I've seen going for $190 that I've gotten for $100. So, you know, you just got to know how to bid. And know when to stop. Know when to, know when to hold them and know when to fold them. So, my conclusion over this thing. So, I think this thing was mainly made for a basically a utility knife on steroids and it makes sense because of the thickness of the handle and the type of pressure you can get down to the handle and the thickness of the spine of the blade down to the thickness of the edge you know it makes sense it makes sense that it's not a hard use knife but it's kind of a hard use utility knife now, you do want to be careful running your tip across certain surfaces because you don't want to round your tip, but it's really good for utility cuts. And then when you do need to do some slices here and there, breaking down some cardboard, popping some straps, you can absolutely do it and it will do it very well. It's not going to be your high performance slicer, but it will be your high performance utility cutter that can slice. And I respect that. That's awesome. And because the blade and the handle make sense in my opinion here, a lot of times I find knives that they just, the handle and the blade just don't go together. It doesn't make sense. You'll have a hard use handle with uh, a light duty uh, blade or maybe a hard use blade on a, on a crappy handle that you can't even get a good grip on. So it's like, how are you ever going to hard use this knife when 
you can't, you know, hard use with the handle comfortably. The handle needs to be very comfortable if you're going to hard use it. So this makes a little bit of sense, and I like that. And I like the, all the also the other little details where they got the the red G10 ring. The carbon fiber is done very well. You don't often see white G10. That's beautiful. Titanium liners. I love titanium liners. It just feels so comfortable in the hand. The the choil's done so good. Easy to sharpen. You're gonna get a lot of life out of the sharpening. I love, love, love to see that. And, you know, I love Tepe's designs. I mean, this thing is done pretty well. Now, like I said, there are a couple things that are a little wonky with it. Not nothing crazy, but you know, you've seen what I showed already. But, and I wouldn't call it wonky. I'm sorry. That, I was misspeaking there. Not wonky. Just, I they could have done a little bit better. But, and also, you know, it, it feels like uh, a good quality knife but it also like i said it has an unusual feeling because of how thick the handle is versus the blade so it does have a little bit of a, a, a different feeling to it but when i understand what it's made for it makes sense all right guys i'm sorry it went on so long i love you guys thank you seems logical thank you guys for watching peace